Hello, I'm Henderson from Writing East Midlands, as most of you know. Um, Digital Development Agency for the Region, which most of you know also. In our work with artists and organisations around the region, I often get asked about our links with the British Council <laughs> and about what they do. So it's been a great pleasure that we welcome the British Council literary team here today and you can hear it straight from them instead of from me, it's telling you wrong stuff. In many ways it's fitting that we're here in Leicester, given its mercantile past and its connections with all the parts of the Commonwealth. Little known fact, in 1936 the League of Nations listed Leicester as the second richest, sadly after London, city in Europe. It became an attractive destination for refugees, fleeing persecution and political turmoil in continental Europe and across the world. It remains that way today. Um, partly because of that, but not wholly. Leicester's diversity is well documented. The whole world is here, and interestingly, it's becoming more British as the population becomes more diverse. More people identify themselves as British, despite their diverse ethnic and cultural backgrounds. So, I, for one, am really interested in the idea of Britishness, perhaps in some way this is represented by the British Council. I've also got a bunch of other questions. <laughs> what do they do? And why? Where do they do it? Are they soft power winning the hearts and minds all around the world so we can sell stuff to people later? Controversial. <laughs> or are they a strange hangover from a colonial past? Or, as it's likely none of those things, but just great believers in art and culture as we all are. I'm delighted to welcome Cortina Butler and Daisy Leach. Cortina is the Director of Literature at the British Council and she'll answer or ignore some of my questions. <laughs> and after that there'll be time for us to wander around and chat to the team. Please do that, make the most of this opportunity. It's great for them to come, really, really delighted you're here. Um, and thanks for coming and welcome to Cortina. Um, thank you very much for coming. Um, thank you very much to uh, Writing East Midlands for arranging this as well. Um, as Henderson said, I'm the Director of Literature um, and Daisy is one of our programme managers. And, and the idea is I'll talk for about, it might be half an hour, it might be less than that. And then there'll be plenty of time for questions and also Daisy and I'll be, we'll be around <coughs> here basically until you've all gone um, to answer <laughs> any questions. Um, and we will also um, send the presentation to he um, Henderson so that if you want a copy you can have it and also let you know how to get in touch with us. The, the, the purpose of this, and this is the third one we've done, we've been to Newcastle and to Manchester so far, <coughs> is partly to just say, hi, here we are, we're the British Council, this is what we do. It's also more importantly, from our point of view, to hear about what you're doing and to get a sense of, um, which we are already, just the whole range of different activity that's going on in the UK. Um, we can never promise that we'd be able to work with you, but the key thing about the fact that you've come along is that you know that we will know about you and that we will consider you when we're thinking about things that we might be doing. So, the British Council. So this is answering some of Henderson's questions, and I'm sure there will be ones I don't answer, in which case you can ask them at the end. Um, so we were founded in 1941, uh, in 1934 actually, to create friendly knowledge and understanding between the UK and the wider world. That phrase came about, that's why I was saying 1941, because in 1941, various eminent people were sitting down and thinking, what should the British Council do? And the thought that in the midst of the blitz and the bombing and everything else, somebody was sitting down and thinking, what should the British Council do, I think is fascinating and a tribute to the importance of our role. It's not coincidental that we, we started in the 1930s in a time where um, democracy, freedom of speech, um, a whole load of values were being threatened in Europe and our, um, our oldest um, operations are in places like um, uh, Romania, Germany, sort of Central Europe, Poland, places like that that all go back to the 1930s. We work with over 140 countries um, uh, in fields of art and culture, English language, education and civil society. So 
About 50% of what we do is English language teaching internationally and that actually brings revenue in from the organisation as well. Um, we work in education society so that's everything from uh, creating higher education links to putting together programmes on access to justice in Nigeria for example. Um, and we work across almost all art forms. So I'm the director of literature but there are equivalents to me for all the other art forms. Um, and our objective is to create opportunities for people in the UK and people in the countries where we work. Mutuality is really important to us. But, but absolutely core is the understanding that what British Council is is a cultural relations organisation. At core, we are about creating connections. Um, and some of that produces what are called soft power outcomes in that we hope that by getting to know us and um, understanding a bit more about British culture, British people, then the people that we work with may be more willing to listen, not necessarily to agree, but to listen and have a conversation. So this is who we are. Um, so um, we're based uh, mainly in uh, London, but we have a colleague who's based up in Manchester. Um, the way it works is that we have uh, program managers who each have um, connections with our colleagues internationally. So Daisy, who is here, works particularly with our colleagues in South Asia, um, in India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, Iran, Afghanistan, Nepal. even. Um, and um, she acts as a bridge between our colleagues there, who all have their own sort of cultural relations objectives, and the literature sector in the UK. And that's key, actually, because it's... It's our colleagues in international countries who, who drive the programme. So there may well be things, and there are things that we're wanting to do with our literature programme, but it's our international colleagues who have their own particular priorities. And the challenges if you're in Brazil can be very different from if you're in Turkey or if you're in India or if you're in Japan. Your audience is different, the attitudes that you're wanting to address are very different. And so the programs that are put together, um, and even the art forms that they, they work with, can be very different. So there are some countries, Russia for example, we've been doing a lot of work with recently, very, very strong in literature. They, they themselves have a very, very strong literary heritage, are very respectful and interested in um, British literature. There are other countries where performing arts may be much more what, what they're interested in. Um, and, um, you know, for example, Kazakhstan, I think it's mainly dance, dance that they work with in music. Mm -hmm. So it, it varies a lot. Also key is the fact that it's our colleagues in country who hold the budgets. <laughs> um, and so they have the final say on whether something goes ahead. So there's a lot about our, our team, um, which is about <coughs> selling ideas, selling, selling, selling ways of achieving those connections, selling, selling you know, good ideas for programmes. But a lot of those programs come from meeting people like you and hearing about things that you're doing, about forming connections within communities in the UK, which can then be translated into projects that we do internationally. We work with a very, very wide <coughs> range of people. Um, we actually have a very broad interpretation of literature. Um, so authors, translators, editors, academics, workshop leaders, we work with festivals, we work with publishers, book fairs, development agencies like um, Writing East Midlands. How we decide to who to involve in our programs, we use our own sector experience and across across the team it's quite it's quite varied. Um, we also bring our knowledge of the requirements of the program. So that's an absolutely key thing that um, if, if, if they're only interested in spoken word in Sri Lanka, you know, we may try and persuade them to do other things, but in, in the end it'll probably be spoken word that we end up doing. So the idea is in the course of doing that to try and then give us opportunity to a wider range of people as we can um, to deliver our, our core desires as a literature team, which is really to um, create opportunities for um, not, not just emerging people, but people for whom international hasn't necessarily been a big part of their work before. Um, we, we talk to the sector, we do research, so we have somebody who leads on, on research in the team, but we will also go out to specialists if we're, if we're looking for, in, in a sector where we haven't worked very much, for example, and we want to find out more about it. 
and wherever possible we put out open calls and tenders and um, which is why when I say please please look at our website keep looking there because we will always post those opportunities I mean where we can we will send them out to people as well but um, for example if we're putting a study trip putting together a study trip to publishers we will try and invite people to apply for that wherever possible so our work falls into four main areas but they all overlap so this is an attempt to make logic out of this but it's so building professional industry connections so um, that um, you know professional can mean um, a sort of translation it, it can be about um, uh, writer to writer connections it can be publishing it can be agenting um, it can be literacy um, experts for example we did a big program in Brazil um, where we brought representatives from book trust reading agency and national literature trust to Brazil to talk with their colleagues and share best practice um, because we certainly can't say that we're the best in the literacy area I think in the world um, we also work on showcasing British literature. So that's the um, meat and potatoes, really, of what we do, is um, introducing uh, British writers um, across all genres to um, international audiences, potentially international publishers, international agents. Um, so that can be as basic as providing somebody with work, essentially. You know, they would be travelling for us. They might spend... Um, two or three, four days abroad, so that's a job, but also in the course of that, um, you hope that um, you know, there will be an interest in their writing, um, uh, potentially interest in more, in more work or in their books being licensed or their work being translated or whatever. Uh, we do a lot of work in developing countries and increasingly the shift, so going back to the 1930s, very much European starting in Europe, Yes, go on another um, uh, sort of 80 years and um, the shift is very much towards um, countries that are counted as official development assistant countries so those are, they're on a United Nations list um, I'll talk a bit more about it later but essentially where um, uh, the money that's the 0.7% ring fence money can be spent in counting towards that and we do um, big global programs so, um, just some examples of the type of work that we do. Um, we've been working with the London Book Fair since 2008. Um, now, this is unusual in that this is bilateral programs. So every year, the London Book Fair selects a country to be their guest of their market focus. They call it guest of honor country. Uh, normally, a country where that we feel. Oh, they feel that there's real potential for the UK publishing sector and the international publishing sector to do more business. We put together a cultural programme around that um, and the idea is to introduce British writers to, the, to that country and the other way. So we bring, um, uh, this, this was um, Korea market focus, that's a writer Huan Sok Yong and the um, uh, writer Camilla Shanzi. Um, we are um, uh, in London but then we also took um, a range of British writers to Korea as well. Um, we're just working with Poland at the moment, um, and we'll soon be working with the Baltics. Uh, that in is mainly about writer exchange, but also we normally do projects developing translation, for example. Um, uh, there can be publisher links. We normally take publishers on a trip there for some for, 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 to meet with potential writers or other organisations. This year we've been working with festival organisations and book, book, um, bookshops actually going to Poland and making connections with the Polish sector. Um, another of our programmes is the International Literature Showcase. Um, so we've been doing um, programmes like this actually for many, many years, long before I joined British Council. There have been iterations in Oxford and Cambridge and various other things. The idea of this is, is a sort of concentrated... <laughs> Um, process of introducing the British literature sector to international producers and um, publishers and writers and, and uh, other people and um, recently we've done uh, one, three in Norwich, so one in 2012, one in 2015 where we really focused on building connections between generations, next generation 
um, both sort of um, uh, next generation leaders in the UK and their equivalents internationally. Um, we have just done last week um, uh, another Norwich showcase um, in, in Norwich where we had about 75 or 80 people together in Norwich. So uh, uh, UK writers, uh, UK literature organisations, international literature organisations. But what's different about this is that it's actually part of a whole digital programme. Um, because in the end, the face-to-face -face is always limited. You know, you've got 75 people. Um, if you um, look on the International Literature Showcase website, um, you'll find that actually we've got 80 writers featured, we've got 50 literature organisations. Um, and I hope that if we can really, because this has been very experimental, find a model for digital, that just gives the opportunity to showcase a much, much wider group of people uh, going forward, as well as live stuff, because you still need the face-to-face -face connections as well. Um, but no, it's, it's, going, it's going really well. It's looking completely different from what I thought it was going to be when I first said I think we were to try and do a literature showcase in digital form, but um, that's what's exciting about the sort of work that we do. Um, so increasingly what we're trying to do is to um, sort of put the seed in for connections which we hope will then um, uh, develop and, and flower and what you're looking at here is um, uh, part of building a connection between the Manchester Literature Festival and the Karachi Literature Festival. Um, the, the idea is that if we can start off that connection then, um, then what you hope you'll get a long-term sustainable relationship. Thanks, thanks. Long-term sustainable relationship between UK festivals and other organisations. Um, we've, um, as well as uh, Manchester and Karachi, Edinburgh and Lahore, I think, and in fact, it mostly seems to be South Asia because we're also trying. We've just put a little bit of money in to enable to UK children's literature festivals to form connections with Indian um, literature festivals. Mm -hmm. So have some exchange, talk to each other, find out ways in which they could work. So, so you'll see a sort of theme in terms of exchange and connection building being about, uh, about what we do. So then, um, showcasing. Um, uh, as I said, this is, this is um, at its most basic, it is about presenting UK literature sector to international audiences. Um, it's never as simple as that because you know, you, if you're a writer travelling um, with us, you would almost always do some form of masterclass, some form of workshop, some other things. Um, but um, this is an example um, of a program that we do, we have done for 30 years now in Berlin, um, where the idea is to sort of update German. Uh, sort of academics, publishers, journalists, translators about British literature. Um, because what you do find when you travel abroad, not surprisingly, um, is, is, you know, if people have studied the literature, they tend to be rather locked into whatever was current at the time they were studying. Um, and if they haven't, then they probably have heard of Ian McEwan and J.K. Rowling, and that's, you know, that's really where they are. Um, and I can't speak because if called upon to sort of uh, name, you know, five French writers today, I would have a lot of difficulty in doing it. So, so the idea is really to introduce people internationally to to a range of different writers um, that um, uh, that that represent the uh, UK literature sector today. So, what you're looking at is Malika Booker, the poet. Um, and a uh, writer called Sean uh, Dadua Otu, who actually is living, lives in Germany. She, I mean, she's English, but she, um, British. She lives in Germany, but she won a huge German prize called the Ingeborg Bachmann Prize last year um, for her first short story. I think it's one of those amazing mm -hmm. things. And that was part of a really interesting seminar, actually, where we focused on, on diversity and we had... Um, um, including those two, but Nikesh Shukla, Hari Kunzru, um, Catherine Johnson, and Niranosan Okoji. And it was a great, great session, actually. I mean, sometimes we do things like health and well-being, or um, 
one quite challenging one, which was form intention, which everybody took a lot of time trying to get their heads around. But they're always interesting, and, and at core, it doesn't really matter what the topic is. The idea is that you're presenting, you know, some uh, writers that people may not have heard of or may not have been particularly aware of. And we're now um, doing this program in Russia um, at Tolstoy's home, and um, I'm going there in a couple of weeks' time. And uh, it's fascinating because there's a real sort of hunger to hear about, you know, what, what people want is a route into where to start with British literature, really sort of where, you know, it's like going into a bookshop, you've finished reading whatever series of books you were reading, and you're thinking, where on earth do I start? And it's trying to find sort of points in, I think, for people internationally. Um, this was a Russian program, completely mad, and actually very successful in the end. So this was the Trans-Siberian Express, where we took um, uh, two writers and uh, a musician. So we had Joe Dunthorne and Andrew Dixon writers, Gruff Reese from the Super Furry Animals, who's a musician. Um, and they, together with um, Francesca Panetta from The Guardian, um, a Russian photographer, and a <coughs> Russian uh, writer, Alicia Ganyeva, um, went from Moscow to Krasnoyorsk in Siberia and stopped off at various points on the way, um, uh, meeting audiences. So, so they were connecting with Russian audiences in a, a live form, but also the whole thing was recorded in different ways. So um, some of the journalists wrote about it, there's a film made of it, um, there's, um, there's various other bits of writing, and Gruff has done sort of bits of music around it. So the idea is you start with something and then you expand your audience much more in different ways. Um, so they did 14, 14 days and stopped off in five cities, I think, and work that what they're doing there is learning Russian. Because what else do you do on the Trans-Siberian Express when you're going from one city to the next? So then developing countries. Um, as I said, this is an area where... Um, British Council as a whole is doing more and more work and there's an um, increasing amount of um, government funding going into that area. Um, now actually, government funding only constitutes about 18% of our, of our revenue. The rest we generate ourselves. Um, but actually a lot of that 18% is spent on arts because arts is not a great revenue generator in terms of um, pulling in other sorts of funding. And, and from the government point of view, they, they want a more and more of that to be spent in developing countries. So we, we raise other money in order to do work in places like you know, Germany and France and the US. And that's, imp that's really important. And um, with the uh, change in the status of the UK in regard to Europe as we, as we leave um, the EU, um, it, it creates a, um, an opportunity for the British Council, I think, to be doing more, to be more working there. So, you know, maintaining the connections that we have, building new ones, um, helping to shape the new relationship that we have with Europe. But we're having to learn, and I think it's going to be interesting as far as the sector is concerned, is working out how we can play a part in working in developing countries. Now, you know, we... I'm not saying at all that arts can um, stop wars. That art, you know, there's 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 only you know there's there's a core of sort of development work which we're not trying to touch. But but there then comes a point where arts can really really play a part in enabling people to communicate, to express what they've gone through, um, help to create opportunities for people. Um, the creative um, sector is a huge revenue generator for the UK. It can be for other countries as well. So there are lots of roles to play, but it's not straightforward working out how. And, and certainly from a literature point of view, we are not the most obvious art form to be playing that role. Um, but we think that actually literature has a huge, huge part to play. Um, and we, we are we're all going to be going on a journey, I think, working out how we can play that part how we can sell the value of literature in that kind of work um, and, and then working with the literature sector in the UK to, to skill up in a sense and to be able to frankly access the money that's available for that kind of work. Um,
this is an interesting, this is uh, Haifa Sangana, um, uh, writer, journalist, running a cultural journalist, journalism workshop in Ramallah <coughs> in the occupied Palestine territories in, tw territories in 2014. So that was working with young, sort of 20 to 30 year old um, writers, mostly were journalists, but they really wanted to go into the cultural journalism sector. And it was about it was about the creative side of it, but also about just how you how you reach an audience, how you prepare your work, how you present your work, all of that kind of practical things. Um, given particularly that in um, Palestine there's there there are very limited opportunities for anybody really to do work and um, uh, support themselves. Um, this is a project um, in Sudan. Um, around Shakespeare um, with poet Diana Roger um, and um, working with Sudanese poets. Um, was it, can you remember, was it South Sudan or was it Sudan? It might even, it was it probably was South Sudan. Might even be in South Sudan. Um, uh, no, actually I think it was Khartoum, so that's, um, so it was sort of, but, um, but that you can see Diana, but then, you know, working with the whole number of um, local poets as well. Um, and again, that's about helping to develop their practice. Um, you, you know, it's sort of, um, you know, we have, and there's a number of people here actually, a lot of experience in the UK now in building networks for spoken word poets and opportunities for um, groups of young people particularly, and it's taking that kind of experience and sharing it. Um, not telling people what to do, but sharing it with um, countries where there are opportunities. And I have to say, spoken word, for those of you working in the spoken word area, there's a real, real interest in that uh, in internationally amongst our colleagues, I think, a, a, a feeling that that's something where you can really connect with a, a young, uh, young audience. Um, global programs. So again, um, there are some programs most of what we do is, is sort of working with particular countries, although we try and produce, um, if you like, template, um, uh, template sort of programs that can then be adapted from country to country, um, as one will come up to. But, um, but sometimes we have programs that cross a number of different art forms, or in the case of Shakespeare, the whole of the British Council got sort of energised in working with this. Um, so it was Shakespeare's, the 400th anniversary of Shakespeare's death last year. Um, governments love anniversaries, they really love anniversaries, and I can absolutely see the point of anniversaries in terms of creating a book. It's a challenge when what you're trying to do is to create opportunities for contemporary writers <laughs> when you're dealing with a dead poet, you know, literally in this case a dead poet. Um, but actually, the great thing about Shakespeare was that um, it's long enough ago, there's an accept, acceptance, I think, that Shakespeare is robust enough to allow people to make many, many different interpretations, and, and there are lots and lots of people you know, working uh, with and around Shakespeare's work. Um, and so, in the literature area, we worked, you know, we did translation programs, um, working with um, Translators today in different in different countries in six different languages in the end in um, in South America in um, Europe and in the Far East, um, but it sort of wasn't about translating Shakespeare. It was about the networks that are formed in those workshops and about the discussions that people have around the challenges of translation. Um, we worked in graphic novels with graphic artists, sort of um, on Shakespeare sonnets. Um, we worked with um, a lot of poets who had responded to Shakespeare's sonnets and then went and connected with other international poets, in particularly um, three Russian poets and three Scottish poets spent time together sort of translating each other's work and talking about Shakespeare. And we had a program called Walking Cities, which sort of came out of nowhere. Um, and this was a British writer meeting an international writer and spending time walking around their city. So it's, it's, the program is a, an exchange program, so a British writer goes to that country and then they come back again. Um, and then we capture it in film. Um, but um, this was particularly around cities where Shakespeare's plays have been based. 
Um, and this was Vienna, which I think is measure for measure. So I'm looking at Daisy, I think it's measure for measure. Um, so Yulia Rabinovich, who's this Austrian poet, and um, Kayo Chingonyi. Um, as you can see, they had a great time. And um, there's a great video that came out of it. Um, so again, it's about, you know, again, a challenge for us with literature is literature can be very, very small scale. Um, and that's not that that connection between a writer and another writer isn't really important and can be life-changing sometimes. Um, but, but we're also in a context where everybody wants big numbers, you know, what's the reach, you know, please can we have 5 million, please, or 50 million in the case of India, I think, which Daisy is working on. Um, and so what we're doing is we're not, not doing those connecting things, those individual connections, but we are trying to find ways of using digital to expand the audience that way. So using that personal connection, the, 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 um, the, the writer to writer experience, but then, uh, then making something more of it. And in fact here, with this we also worked with young filmmakers who uh, gave them a commission. So as many different things are going on when you're layering, layering um, together a, a, a program. So, just a quick sort of thing of things that we're particularly working on at the moment. So, how the UK City of Culture 2017. Um, I think I said to somebody actually, I've visited more um, English cities, particularly since I joined British Council four years ago than I ever had before. And I'd never been to Hull before. I had been to Leicester before. <laughs> I'd never been to Hull before. Um, and uh, we are working on a project, um, well, two, two projects. One is connecting Trinidad Young Slam Poets with London Young Slam Poets with Hull Young Slam Poets uh, in a sort of three-way thing. And, um, and the idea is that all of those young poets will have their practice developed and the excitement of, um, of meeting other people, talking with other people. And it sort of comes to fruition in Hull at the BBC Contains Strong Language Poetry Festival, which is going to be at the end of September. We're also, um, and it links with our market focusing Poland, we're also got a project that involves bread, I think, which is something to do with, not being the one organising it, but um, there's a programme called Hull Rises, which is one of the programmes, literary programmes that's going on in Hull. And I think there's going to be a Polish poet coming over and spending time um, with bread makers in Hull, and there's going to be a Hull <laughs> poet going to um, going to Poland, um, where there's a lot of bread of different kinds. So and, and something creative and interesting and exciting will come out of it. it um, I'm confident. Um, and and again, whatever comes out of it, we will then try and share as widely as we can. Um, uh, in fact, actually, I'll be coming on to picture bits. Yeah. So there's Hull. That's um, uh, that's uh, talking doorsteps, which is the whole Trinidad London thing. That's um, Deborah Stevenson, um, which some of you may know from Mouthy Poets. Um, yes, expressing herself in. Trinidad. <laughs> um, so Poland market focus. Um, uh, we've actually done quite a lot with Hull around Poland, but essentially that's been uh, Polish writers coming to the UK, um, both during the London Book Fair and through the year. Um, connections between UK festivals, we, and we took the head of Hull Libraries to um, Poland to meet with um, library people working there. Some UK festivals have been there, as well as writers and publishers, and again that's forming, forming connections, and of course really really exciting because of the scale of the Polish community in the UK and um, more than most market focuses the opportunity to work with the um, uh, Polish um, Cultural Institute has been really really exciting actually because they do a huge amount of work here anyway so that's that's been really interesting actually and um, um, Poland's an inter interesting country I think and our relationship with Poland is very interesting so that's been that's been really interesting um, we also do, um, we call them seasons. Essentially, it's about a concentrated period of activity in a country. 
Sometimes that's just British Council, it may be just art, it's about an art season. Sometimes, like when we did with Mexico in 2015, it grows like topsy and you end up with government involved and high level bilateral stuff going on and um, visits by Prince Charles and things like that. Um, we currently have a big India focus, um, which Daisy, because she's doing South Asia, is involved with. Um, so there is uh, India, UK activity here and a big program in, in India marking the 70th anniversary of Indian independence. Um, and that includes Akram Khan. The curve Kavlingwood. has been involved. Right, brilliant, so. excellent. Um, and then, um, as I mentioned, the International Literature Showcase, which um, I please do look at the ILS um, website. It's an ongoing program. If you sign up, you'll get newsletters, um, uh, things that there's an opportunity to connect with international organizations as well as. Um, uh, <laughs> information about a um, whole range of UK writing and organisations and actually when you get everybody together in a room, you know, our, our starting point is that UK international connection, but actually what goes on, there was one point when I was doing a sort of sitting down for a workshop and what I had sitting in front of me was a Russian, a Turkish person and Chinese. Chinese, that was it, but three most challenging countries to work in, um, who all wanted to do something together, and I was saying, but you need to get a UK link if you want to get the um, bit of um, um, seed funding that we can provide. Um, but actually it's really exciting, um, exciting those connections that go on, and UK organisations that hear about what they're doing for the first time, and decide they're going to do something together and everything. So that's, um, so as you, you never know what's going to come out of that, I think. So, um, how can you connect with us? Well, the key thing is to let us know when you're doing something that, um, that you think might be relevant. Um, I can't promise that we will work with you this year or next year, but we will remember. And there may come a moment when actually that project that you've been doing may be just the sort of thing that would work, or, or introducing somebody internationally to you um, and letting you form that connection could be just the right, the right thing. Um, so, so this is why we do, we're trying to do events like this, but this is why it's always worth writing to us and saying, actually I'm doing this interesting project. And we were talking about, because I'm absolutely aware that Nobody has spare resource for international working, and and it's it's um, it's always rewarding, but it's time consuming. Um, and um, and what what we can do though sometimes if is if you've got a model that might work, is just take you and say explain how it works. You know that can be a relatively short manageable thing. You don't have to run the program. Um, so just interesting things that you've been doing, and even before we came up, Daisy and I were Googling you all, of course, to find out who was going to be in the audience. And there's a really interesting range of things going on, some of which I think would really be interesting to translate. So, so there's lots of different ways, but the key thing is let us know. Please look on the website, it's particularly Daisy's baby, um, but we do try and um, uh, post up as much about what we're doing, so examples of what we're doing, more than I've given here. Um, you know, if there is an open call or there is an opportunity, um, but also, you know, if you're a if you're a you know publisher and you're working in translation and you'd be interested in, um, you know, at some point going on one of our study trips, let us know actually because we try and keep across of, you know, everybody working in that sector. But but I'm always surprised actually somebody's sort of just not reached our um, radar. Um, Artists International Development Fund, at the moment we are collaborating with the uh, Arts Council on an international touring fund of small grants um, for individuals or for um, people working in small organisations. Um, the, uh, the next round closes August the 2nd, I think. Um, the grants are up to £5,000. Um, now, 
What I'm not sure is in this round of funding whether that's going to carry on, but there's certainly going to be a couple more rounds. And so um, if you have an idea for something international, the key thing is about it being about development. Development is the key, you know, to be able to show that your practice would be developed, that you would form new connections, you know, ideally a country maybe you haven't been to or something like that. But not enough literature people apply. Not, you know, it's, it's, if you're writing visual arts, they absolutely nail it. And, you know, we know that there's lots of visual arts applications, but um, we don't, we aren't a grant giving body. Um, you know, we do give grants, but they're always within the context of a program that's been put together for cultural relations reasons. Um, whereas this is a grant where it's just about you, it's about your professional development, it's about your practice. Um, and um, so, so certainly, you know, as I said, I don't know how long to go on for, but it's certainly worth um, looking at. Um, we have a newsletter which goes out sort of every six weeks, four to six weeks or so. Um, which tells you about stuff that we're doing. As I said, you know, it's just worth, because it may give you an idea, you know, or and who knows. We, there's interesting projects, interesting people. Um, at Lit British, we tweet about stuff, we tweet opportunities as well, not just ones that we're providing, but if somebody tells us about an opportunity, we'll tweet it as well. So again, if you're doing anything that involves an open call or you're looking for some kind of things, then let us know, because we'll, we'll we've got about 15,000 Twitter followers, something like that. So, um, and as I said, let us know what you're getting up to. Um, um, we have a, we will give you cards, but also um, there's a um, uh, there's a, a, a an email address um, as well, which I think is literature at britishcouncil.org. Um, anyway, um, but you can email us. <laughs>